Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. <clears throat> um, basically, the, the case of D Dylan Seabridge is absolutely, <laughs> you know, heartbreaking. And those of us who have children feel that way about this, and especially the fact that the, the people who were charged with protecting him are the ones who, who failed him. Now, I know many living families who have homeschooled their children with great success, and those children have turned out well and, and well-rounded and have actually gone on to have good careers and gone to university. In contrast, we can look at the case of um, little Daniel Pelker, who died at the hands of his parents in 2012, who was going through the traditional system and was found rummaging in bins for food at school because he was being horribly mistreated at home. Now, despite this and the fact that he missed 28 days of school, and the abuse was not picked up by the teachers or by any of the people who were charged with looking after him. And my plea is that, as you have said, that you do not have a knee-jerk reaction to Dylan's case and that homeschooling is not made more difficult or challenging for those who choose this path. How is it that you can ensure that vulnerable children are seen regularly by those charged with their protection and that no more children slip through this safety net, and that parents who homeschool are not going to be vilified. And also, will you ensure that there is a balance between the, what, the right of parents to raise their children the way that they see fit and the right of the child to education and health? And just one last point. You've raised many times now about vaccination. Um, are you saying that people who don't vaccinate their children that this is a, a trigger by which you think that there may be abuse going on at home? Or what, what was the relationship to which you were raising vaccination? Could you just make that clear? 